It's a great day at Tuckasegee Fly Shop, everybody. Big mess here in Waynesville. Sorry for the peak on the voice meter, but you're awake now. I'm going to tie for you a mm, Southern Appalachian pattern called the Tennessee Wolf. A lot of folks are familiar with the Royal Wolf, but this one's the Tennessee Wolf. And it's not Volunteer Orange either, just so you know. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be using a size 12 dry fly hook today. I'm using some, uh, I think it's 6.0 Classic Black Nano Silk, th uh, excuse me, <laughs> it's not Nano Silk if it's Classic Wax, but uh, some black thread. Use black or brown if you want to here. So what I want to do first is get me a thread base laid here on our hook, and I'm doing that by using a combination of the rotating feature of Norvice and, of course, this fine ceramic auto bobbin. So what I'm going to use for the wings is I'm going to use some calf body instead of the calf tail. I'm going to get this stacked out here for us and get some really nice stacked hair. We're going to tie this in parachute style and then we're going to split it to make our upright wings, okay? So I want to clear out any of the under, the small little under fur there. I want to lay this up here. That looks good. Give that a really good counterclockwise spin. I want my thread to jump backwards. I like that. I'm securing that with these pinch wraps. I'm going to walk this down a little bit like so. Scissors in my right hand. I want to come in here and trim it. Go ahead and start to form my taper of the fly. I like that now. So I want to rotate. People ask, how often do you rotate your vise? It really depends on what part of the process I'm in on tying the fly itself and where I'm at and how materials are sticking up. So for instance, if I'm tying in a wing like so, um, you know, it's kind of out of the way and I can spin it. I'm not hitting the wing. A caddis, for instance, you, you've got a lot of things to work with before you put a wing on it. So you can do a lot more rotations with the vise faster than you would um, going like slow wraps. So the next part of this process is we're going to have to lift this wing up we're going to put a thread down in front of the calf. And I know it may be hard to see this, but you're just doing those wraps, kind of biting into that. And the whole goal here is to try to stand this up as best as we can. I'm going to go ahead and take my half inch tool and go ahead and put a couple of half inches just in case I do break the thread. I don't want this part to come unravel and have to start over. I'm going to put that over there in my um, tool caddy. Now I'm going to kind of take my thumb push these back and try to separate that out as best we can. Um, so I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. And when you tie, you know, you tie these, you, you get pretty good at guessing where it should be splitting at. In a day, it doesn't have to be perfect, um, but you want to get it as close enough to perfect as it, as it can be. Um, if you're anal, you can spend waste a lot of time here trying to be perfect. I'm just going to come in here and split that with a couple of um, cross wraps. Now that I've got our got it started, I want to start doing figure eight wraps. I don't know a good way to explain this to you because I'm not good at articulating particular words. So I'm going to slow down. I'm going to go around the far wing towards you. I'm going to come cross over. I'm going to go around the wing on my side. It makes an X. And then I'm going to take a wrap around the hook. Hopefully that was a pretty good instruction on that or explanation. I'm going to do that again. And when you do this a lot, you can get pretty quick at that. You can just come in here and just start going pretty quick. But you see intently, you see how it's still not stiff enough that you can go crazy with it. it the thread will slip off. So that's not going to go nowhere. So let's just go ahead and take our tool, put a half hitch in it. So the next thing I want to do is I kind of want to take these wing materials here. And I just want to bundle them together just a little bit more. So all I want to do is I'm just going to start making wraps around that post just a little bit. And we're not going to go too terribly far. But what it's going to do is it's going to really clean that up area up. So when I go to put my hackle here, it's going to look good. Um, not look good, but it's going to give me a little bit more space um, to work with. And you can see that kind of slips. And there we go. If you want to at this point... If you wanted to drop a little bit of head cement on that, you could do so. It's, it's not required, but it's certainly something you could do. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to bring my thread back to the back and I'm stopping basically in line with the barb on the hook. If you're using barb, it, barbless, it would be where the barb would be. Okay. I'm going to take some deer hair, stack it, pull it out. Got a, you know, a decent stack there. Not too crazy. I, I, I like, I think the tail flies like this are, are important to have enough to help it float. Flies like this, visibility is great, but you can fish these in a little bit faster water. And I feel like this fly performs when it's when it it can stand up and the fish can take notice of this particular fly. Uh, meaning that it's just not getting drug under the water. It, it just can't handle being in that seam on the edge of the white water. If I was at the creek, I can point to you with the rod where I'm talking about where you would fish this particular fly. But here um, in the early spring, we have higher water flows due to the rain that we've received after winter and any of the snow melt that we get. So having a fly that floats really well is important. So as you notice, I kind of took a little test. That's a little too long for me there. So I'm just going to un unwrap that. Not a big deal. I like to lay these fibers in on my side and, and, and let the thread rotate them up to the top. I'm cool with that. I want this fly to be a bushy fly. And I'm just going to lock these down. When I get to the back, I don't make as tight of a wrap. But as I come forward, I can really start to come down on it like so. If we put a lot of pressure at the back, it's going to cause those fibers to do this. And unless that's the look you're wanting to do, um, it's, it's, it'll float really well, but it, it may not be the look you're looking for. But you can see where when I angled that cut and I laid these fibers on top, now look at that body. Okay. See, see how that really worked out well? That's important. So we've got a heck of a thread base now. So the next part of any wolf style fly, whether it's a, you know, a rural wolf, a Tennessee wolf, a Carolina wolf, you got to use some peacock curl. And for those of you folks who use a lot of peacock curl, you understand that peacock curl is a brittle, it's a great material to, to tie with and fish with, but it doesn't, it'll break very easily. So one of the cool things about the Norvice is we can take and we can spin some peacock curl on here, make an awesome chenille with it. So I'm going to pick some strands of the peacock as we know it's pretty brittle. And I want to take these fibers. I want to take the tips. I'm going to trim the tips off just like so. I'm going to discard that one's kind of short. I'm going to take the tips. I'm going to tie the tips in like this. Okay. I'm going to leave my thread back here, but I'm going to put in a half hitch. Try to guide that right there. Now I want to put my thread over here on my thread post. I want to take these strands of peacock. I'm going to loosen up my tension knob. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to spin that peacock up to make a chenille. Okay. Now you're going to see it as I start to wrap it, what I did. I want to start walking this up. You see that chenille, peacock chenille body that I just made? See how that is right there? Stands up. It's really durable. And at this point here, I'm just going to go ahead and make a wrap or two here. I want to come around and capture that again. And this is not going to go to nowhere. It's there. We're set. I want to come in here and trim that off just like that. That body, if you tie Griffin's gnats, you tie peacock caddis, man, this this is legit. This, this is another reason why you buy a Norvice fly tying system because of stuff you can do like this here. For you folks that are saying, hold the phone, phone, you messed up, big mess. I didn't mess up. I'm going to tie, I want to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to go ahead and tie in my hackle feather. We're going to finish this fly off. Then we're going to put our band in. Okay. I find that for me, it's easier and I can do it more efficiently. So I want to take my feather here. I'm going to prep it. I want to, once again, shiny side is towards you. Dull side toward me. I'm going to come in here like so. And I'm going to take these bottom barbules off. 
that gives you basically a cleaner tide fly. If you really want to show off, doesn't mean it fishes better, it fishes worse, honestly. Um, but it keeps those uh, fibers from crisscrossing in there a little bit, just like this. So I want to have this over here, the stem toward my side like this. I'm going to come in here like so. I want to pull the wings out of the way. And this area right here, you know, we're going to finish this. And this is going to give us a very good clean eye of the hook here. Could I brought my wings forward a little bit? I, I could. It's not necessary. But this, to me, this is the right proportions on this particular fly. So I want to come in here like this, like so. A couple of half hitches. I want to secure my auto bobbin over here on the thread cradle or the post. I want to take my feather. This is where I want to use the tension knob. I want to tighten the tension up a little bit. And I'm just going to use my finger and I'm going to rotate the vise. As I do that, I'm going to control where these hackle wraps go. Okay. Now I want to come in front. So I want to pull those wings back like that. And then I'm just going to walk them up like this. S side by side by side by side by side by side. So there we go. Now, I might do one more wrap right there, okay? I'm going to bring my thread back over. I'm going to capture that stem. Okay, beautiful. Well, that's not going to go nowhere. If you ever question that, you can always come back and do it again. Not a big deal. I want to put a half hitch in it. There's a few errant fibers right there, just like that. Secure this over here out of the way. I'm going to rotate this. Take my scissors that I keep in my right hand. I'm just going to come in here, close, just like that. Beautiful. I'm going to take my whip finish tool. I'm going to do a couple of whip finishes in here like so. So if you want to come in here and bring those fibers back, you can do so. Just like that. If you want to do a third, that's perfectly fine. It's just redundancy. This is a fly that's easy to get. You can put too much material on it and get carried away. And you, and you, it's, you know, you just can't get your tippet through the eye of the hook. And if you can't get to tip it through, you can't fish the dang thing, regardless of how awesome it looks. If, if you cannot get a clean eye, you know, boom. Could, could I, could I move the wing up a 16th of an inch? Absolutely. Could I got a hackle or two more wrap on? Absolutely. But do I care? I don't because this fly is going to fish very well. So at this point, everything is done except for one thing is we haven't put our band in here. So when I tie a lot of these up for production, this is how I tie them. I just tie them like this. I put them in a pile. I take them out of the vise. I'm done. When I got them all tied, I put them back in the vise. That would dare fish by itself, I think. Mm -hmm. I, wouldn't you? I mean, I think it would fish very well. Maybe we should, should do that one day. Just see. Um, so what I've got here is I've actually got some uni stretch in green. Made in Canada. Hey, so what we're going to do now, if you're doing a, a Royal Wolf, a Royal Coachman, a Tennessee Wolf, Carolina Wolf, what we're going to do is we're going to come back here and we're going to start to make our band just like you would just a regular thread base like so. Do you see how that uni stretch kind of flattens out? It's got an awesome feel to it. I got some of the old poly that we had. All you got to do now, we've got the wraps. I want to take a whip finish tool. I'm just going to make there we go that's your Tennessee wolf that ain't going nowhere that is how I kind of tie those up pretty quick um, maybe a little bit back but nonetheless you've got your peacock you got your green you get everything you want in it just like that so um, if you're not tying your your royal wolves like that give it a shot um, if you want a Carolina Wolf, all you do is you change this to a yellow. I, that's all the, the difference is. Carolina Wolf, but Tennessee Wolf is the most popular uh, that we hear about. People ask for it in the shop. Uh, 12s and 14s is the most common size, of course. Inchworms start hanging. It's a really good fly. It's, it's, it's a great one. Fish this and, and drop an inchworm off the back end of it. And it would be a great thing to do. Great fly. Uh, we'd love for you to try it. Try tying these. Do not get frustrated at all, uh, give us a call, 828-488-3333. If you want to try the Norvice, stop by any one of our three shops. We have them there for you to spin up. 
flyshopusa.com. Hit that subscribe and, and that notification bell. Y'all take care, folks. We'll see you in the next one.